There will be a program now with President Richard Joel, followed by Mrs. Ms. Marcy Sims, who will be presenting the Sim Cy Sims Humanitarian Award to Mr. Harold Grinspoon. They will then engage in a fireside chat, followed by closing remarks by Dean Moses Pava. Following dessert, David Blatt will be performing his amazing illusionary acts. Before we hear from President Joel, we wanted to take this time to thank all those who've made this night so special. Firstly, we'd like to thank the Career Center for helping prepare us for the working world and for helping us find summer internships and full-time jobs. You make the experience as business students in New York so much easier. We want to thank Hezi, Aliza, and everyone in the Office of Student Life for their help this entire year and throughout the planning pro process. Natan, Michal, Shai, Jacob, and Amanda, our fellow presidents, and their respective boards for helping sponsor this evening. We really enjoyed working with you this year and sharing so many good times. We would like to thank our dedicated board for all your hard work you've put in this year. We couldn't have been as successful without you. Alexa, Schmooze, and Yoni, you each have, done, have gone above and beyond, and we are so grateful to have worked together with you. We'd like to thank our exceptional dinner committee, who this night could not have been possible without. Wally, Eliza, Colia, and the Sims Student Council, you guys are great. To everyone in the Sci Sims office and faculty, we are so lucky to have such amazing faculty that care about our student body and are so dedicated to their classes. We thank you for everything you do and for helping us learn and grow as students. A very big special thank you to Robin Hartman and Alan Sector from IA. We've had a great time planning this event with you. This event really would not have happened without you. Finally, we would like to th thank the administration of Sci Sims. Yeshiva University prides itself on its well-known motto, Nowhere But Here. With its open door pol policy and deep commitment to the student body, the Sci Sims administration truly embodies this idea. Without our fantastic administration, the Sci Sims School of Business would not be the phenomenal institution it is today. Dean Pava, Dean Strauss, and Dean Galoni, on behalf of the student body, Leo and I would like to extend a to you a tremendous thank you for all that you have done for the Sci Sims School of Business and the student body. Last but not least, we'd like to thank President Richard Jill for being here tonight. Thank you for always having an open door to our fellow students and us. And despite having your extremely busy schedule as president, you have always been accommodating to our needs. And with that, we'd like to call upon phenomenal president, Richard Joel, to say a few words. I like the phenomenal part. You guys in the back look like the Maccabees. You're waiting to perform. It's okay. So everything that's been said about acknowledging all of you is all so unbelievably obvious, whether it's the administration and the faculty, parents, the non-graduating students are here because they want to celebrate with you, and this remarkable group of students that we're about to unleash on the world. Last week, I had the, uh, the hard privilege of spending 40 hours in Israel attending the funeral of Rabbi Aaron Lichtenstein, who perhaps today was the greatest light in what we would call the Torah Umada or modern Orthodox world. It was a privilege to be part of it. It was hard. I've never seen three or 4,000 people walking to a cemetery with the kind of respect and decency and kindness that they had. And after the Kfura, I had another burial in Beit Shemesh. And after that, which also had meaning, my driver was driving me back from Beit Shemesh to Yerushalayim. And um, he didn't take the highway because it was crowded. He was taking the back, the back hills. And at 8 o'clock, the uh, radio said, Higiyaz man yom hazikaron. We are now beginning the day of remembrance. And my, uh, my Jewish but non-observant driver stopped the car, reached into the glove compartment and pulled out a kippah, put it on his head, told me to get out of the car. And we stood at the side of the car. And through the radio, a siren began for two minutes. And as I was standing there, I heard sirens from two other settlements that I couldn't even see. And that was the beginning of the Day of Remembrance. Back at the hotel, no programs on the television except old news reels, old Israeli music, 
and a listing of over 22,000 names. Uh, the next morning, everything was closed, the streets were pretty empty. As I was on my way to pay a condolence call, it was 11 o'clock and again, and again, Sion, many of you know him, again, Sion pulled the, pulled the cab over, got out, took his kippah, stood up, and again, a two-minute siren, and all the cars stopped. It was very profound. It probably was a little bit like what Memorial Day was in the day, in the day. And, and I was thinking a lot during Yom HaZikaron, which is a somber day, of the fact that we had buried one of the great lights of our generation, and it's hard to see someone else. And, it's hard, and it really troubled me. As Tzion was taking me to the airport at night, Yom HaZikaron immediately morphs into Yom HaAtzma'ut, Israel Independence Day. And wherever you look in the sky, you see different communities having fireworks. And all of a sudden, I realized what had been troubling me. I said, what, how do we, this great light has died. Where is there going to be Or Chadash? Where is there going to be a new light? And honestly, I said, I guess that's what I do what I do, so I can hang around against the next generation of lights. And you're all here tonight. And you're all here tonight. And you verbalize it. And there is no word to describe tonight more than hopeful. Because you have it all. You have it all and you are all. So I'm delighted to welcome you to celebrate the Sysim School of Business. It's my pleasure to also recognize the presence of Mrs. Lynn Sims, who's here with us this evening. And I must tell you that it's a particular pleasure for me to show you off and to show off your success to our extraordinary guest of honor, my old friend, Harold Grinspoon, who I must tell you has been a teacher to me of what rigorous philanthropy is and what long distance walking is. But I also have to tell you one thing about who Harold is. I was the president of Hillel, Harold, got involved in Hillel in generous ways, but in rigorous ways. Uh, thank God. Um, the check is the easiest part of the involvement with Harold. Uh, the rest are the questions, and that's why the world has a PJ library today. But one day, Harold came over to me and said, you're working too hard, which I never thought he'd say. And he said to me, we have this place in Aspen. It's a small little place, he says, but you need a week off. And he handed me two airline tickets, the address of his condo, right, and dates that we were going to go. It was in the summer. Esther and I went. The second day we were there, someone knocked on the door. It was two people. They said they were our massage therapists. <laughs> and they schlepped, and they schlepped their, their massage tables into the room. And I don't remember anything else. <laughs> But I must tell you, when I saw Harold to thank him, he was embarrassed for me to say much about it, because that's who he is. And you'll hear more from him and of him, and that's not my job tonight. But I just want you to know that for me, I was a collaborator in this invitation, because I have a need to show him that while I left him 12 years ago, we've been doing things that are equally worthwhile. And all the people that you raise at Hillel and that you start from PJ Library will have brothers and sisters from Yeshiva University who will make, sure, will make sure that the Jewish world continues to have substance, generosity, education, and a future. So this awards dinner, which has always been executed with such class because we leave it to you, um, serves as one of the highlights of my year just because of the joyousness that you bring to it. And you have to know, Sims has always been a wonderful idea but the Sai Sims School of Business has never been as wonderful as it is at this moment and will be. It's true. And I promise you it will be better tomorrow. And that's the greatest thing we can say. So Warby Park Parker, the acclaimed stylish eyeglasses company, proudly proclaims, buy a pair, give a pair. This catchphrase refers to their promise that for every pair of glasses purchased, a pair is distributed to someone in need. This notion of giving back, and of giving back as a business principle that can even benefit them, but of giving back, 
of providing for the community at large, of using business acumen to, uh, to improve the world, stands at the epicenter of the SciSim School of Business. On the most basic level, and you said it earlier tonight, Sim, SciSims prepares you to succeed in your business careers through a quality, a focus on quality business education and entrepreneurship, in addition to a broad exposure to liberal arts and Torah. You've been molded into well-rounded world citizens through an environment of rich student life with opportunities for expression, involvement, service learning, sports, and advocacy. But SciSims is more than a school. It's Yeshiva University's business school. And as such, we prepare you not just to make a living, but to build a life. You're a product of a yeshiva environment. Your Judaic studies have imbued you with rigor, with the sort of values which will guide your business dealings, and will make sure that you are living one life, the life of your home and the life of your workplace, and they will not be bifurcated. That's why we talk about, even though you tease me, shlemut. You come out as an integrated person where the pieces fit, and that's critically important. Most of all, I see and I'm thrilled that you've owned a sense of responsibility to the world and will draw from a network of young men and women who will achieve professionally while continuing to lead and serve the Jewish community and all people of goodwill. And talking about that, I'm honored now to present to you Marcy Sims. Marcy is a distinguished business leader and philanthropist having served at various times as chairman, chief executive officer, president, and chief operating officer of the Sims Corporation. She has served as a member of the Sci Sims School of Business Board of Overseers since its founding in 1987, and I had the pleasure of awarding her an honorary degree in 2006 for her leadership and her service to the community, and she currently serves as president of the Sci Sims Foundation. Marcy models this critical balance of business, of rigor, of values, of communal responsibilities, and guides us to make sure that we give you that challenge. She is also by birth, by, pen, by temperament, and by character, Sai Sims' daughter. Those of us who had the privilege of knowing Sai Sims knew that he was a man of principle, a man of business, a very proud Jew, and a loving supporter of education, and a man of the world. I had the privilege of speaking at his funeral at Temple Emmanuel. And the other Mospid, the other person who eulogized him, was the late um, uh, Cardinal Edward Egan, who was a friend of his through, I think, the, the, uh, the, the YMC, the Inner City Scholarship Fund. And I had my words ready, but I deferred to his eminence to speak first. And he got up and he said, there's not much to say. Sai was a mensch. <laughs> now, I'm not sure I would have said it in those words, but everything I said was an adjective to what he said. But the world knew it. Sai was a mensch. And you must know that he had a rigorous love for this school, and he had a set of demands for this school. And I have to tell you, as a believer, that we are part of a timeless journey. Sai is somewhere looking and saying, you're finally getting it right. And one of the reasons is we're getting it right is because those are traits that Marcy is one of our key leaders share, and we're very honored that the name of Cy Sims will always be a brand of excellence here at Yeshiva University. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming Ms. Marcy Sims. Someone gave Richard my speech. Thank you. Um, I don't know how many of these dinners I've been to before, but um, it just is so life-affirming in every single way. I want to thank the students uh, for, for this evening. Um, I want to particularly thank uh, Talia Kugelman and Leo Corman, the Cy Sim School of Business Student Council presidents. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful job. And um, it gives me great pleasure to ascend, it, attend these dinners every year. Uh, this year, it gives me particular pleasure because we're going to be honoring the second uh, uh, recipient of the Cy Sims Humanitarian Award, Mr. Harold Grinspoon, who you've heard a wee bit about already. 
Um, it has been 30 years, actually. I know we heard in the first part of the evening that the school is 28 years old, but actually the check was written 30 years ago. <laughs> right, right. And th that was the actual birth, the idea of the Sai Sim School of Business. And since that birth, there have been many growing pains. But here we are today, and as you've heard so many times, we're better than ever and more relevant than ever. Through these 30 years, the Sai Sims Foundation has never wavered in our support of the students. And the Sai Sims Foundation trustees, some of whom are here this evening, Lynn Sims, Mark Freiberg, uh, my brother Robert can't be here this evening, uh, but we did want to tell you that the foundation will be continuing the support this year with our grant of $500,000. You know, my dad often spoke to me about legacy. He was aware by his middle years that he would need to make choices today to create his legacy for tomorrow. One of the most enjoyable times of my day at work was when we were commuting in a car, either to the office or to a store. Sai never wavered in believing that legacies are about people and ideas, not statues and buildings. The earlier you focus on what you want your legacy to be, the greater the chance you may actually realize some of it during your lifetime. And the only sure way to find focus to do that is through your core values. It was interesting to hear uh, Henry Grissel, who, who actually, thank you, you're uh, leaving your position after serving as uh, chair of the board at YU for, for many years, and, and thank you, and hopefully your next step will be as meaningful. But you were talking, thank you, you were, you were talking earlier in the evening about core values. And certainly, knowing your core values, as we all do who are uh, part of this institution, uh, makes it much easier to focus on what you want your legacy to be. And one of the core values of Cy Sims was education. And why? That was one of his core values because that's what actually made him become the person he became, the quest for education, of coming from Russian immigrant parents who were not educated, of parents that he actually said he was embarrassed to introduce to his American friends when he uh, went to uh, NYU. And that educational core is something that we have in our Jewish faith. Um, and legacy requires you to think beyond today, beyond the material it is that spirit that we created, the Cy Sims Humanitarian Award. We wanted to tap those people who will act as mentors, as inspirations, as heroes for us who believe in legacy and who believe in core values, uh, the core value of education, the core value of ethics, the core values of commitment to community. Now I present to you the role model for this year, a mentor, a visionary, and a mensch, a man I know Cy Sims would have been very blessed to call his friend, and the second recipient of the award, Mr. Harold Grinspoon. Now, Harold, I keep saying Grinspoon, but I've also heard it pronounced Grins Greenspoon. Thank you. I just want to be correct. My mother, my mom always uh, emphasized diction. Um, Harold was raised in a crowded Newton, Massachusetts home during the Great Depression. Persistent anti-Semitism, threats against Israel, and the legacy of the Holocaust convinced Harold of the importance of a strong Jewish community. After dropping out of college, he worked odd jobs before persuading a family member to loan him some money. This sounds so much like Sai's story because he got his first lease from getting someone to loan him money from his family. 
um, to loan him money to buy a rundown two-family home. He used the money he made from selling that property to purchase a four-family home, then a six-family home, and then a 10-unit building. After building a very successful business, Harold was inspired by his wife, Diane Trotterman, to establish the Harold Grinspoon Foundation in 1991 to enhance Jewish life and engage Jews in the richness in their own tradition. The Harold Grinspoon Foundation takes a hands-on approach to philanthropy and has established several initiatives to strengthen the Jewish community. The foundation has three signature programs. PJ Library, and some of us have books on our table tonight or saw the Sadaka boxes uh, downstairs. J Camp 180 and Life and Legacy. J Pre Library currently distributes 380,000 free Jewish books per month to families primarily in North American Israel and distributes an additional <laughs> and distributes an additional 80,000 children's books per month in Arabic in Israel to Arab families. J Camp 180 supports over 90 nonprofit Jewish overnight camps and 24 day camps across North America by providing matching grants, strategic planning, board development, and fund raising assistance. So we have PJ Library, it's created, J Camp 180, and now Life and Legacy. See where I got the legacy? Life and Legacy provides Jewish charitable organizations in 30 communities across the country resources to create legacy-giving programs. For some smaller Jewish communities, the Life Legacy turnkey concept of philanthropy has meant the difference between thriving and disappearing. Harold is quoted in his foundation's most recent annual report as saying, quote, I love the Jewish people. I speak Jewish with my dollars, and we thank you for that. The impact of the Harold Grinspoon Foundation in the Jewish community has made a lasting difference in the quality of life of countless people. Though they worked in different industries, both Harold and Cy Sims understood the importance of legacy. The Cy Sims School of Business is animated by the Jewish values of its founder. He held these values dearly, and so does Harold Grinspoon, this year's recipient of the Cy Sims Humanitarian Award. I would like to ask Harold to join me here at the podium. Now, oh, Harold, okay. Um, we have for you a unique kind of sadaka box. Um, it's so well wrapped, we might not get to see it tonight, but <laughs> um, it, it says, Cy Sims Humanitarian Award presented to Howard Grinspoon in recognition of his entrepreneurial leadership in business and philanthropy. A path-breaking work promoting Jewish identity and literacy throughout the world and the commitment to humanity. And this isn't exactly the little box, but it is. It's beautiful. <laughs> there it is. Okay. There we go. All right. Now we're going to have a little fireside chat. Because Harold, in, uh, without the fireside, um, Harold said, I, I don't like making speeches, and I totally understand what that's about. So um, we're going to see if our mics work. And, and, and <clears throat> Harold, probably most of the people in this room have seen the books that have come from JP Library, but we don't know what inspired you. Could you share with us some of your personal goals in starting the library? Um, 
Some 11 years ago, I was listening to the public radio, and there's a gal by the name of Dolly Parton. Did you ever hear of Dolly Parton? She, um, she's one of 13 children, comes from a very, very poor background, and she started the Imagination Library that now gives out over 600,000 books a month to poor families across America. And she has managed to find partners that pay the bill. And I was very happy to join her and take on Western Massachusetts in that responsibility. Two years later, it occurred to me that perhaps the Jewish world, where the most impressionable ages of a child are the first 2,000 days of birth, that maybe they should learn about their religion, their faith. Maybe the parents want an opportunity to read Jewish books to their, their children. And at that time, there were very, very few Jewish children's stories. So we created PJ Library. We started off with 200 books. And I think we're now doing 146,000 books a month in America. Thank you. And what was so interesting to me in talking to you before about your philanthropy, being an entrepreneur, you've really uh, brought the entrepreneurship into the philanthropic world with you. Um, but you're not at all hesitant to partner. You mentioned Dolly Parton. Uh, you also, with this uh, last effort uh, with the legacy, have partnered with uh, someone else or took over another uh, program that you felt was worthy of your attention and your uh, funds and your knowledge. Uh, could you tell us how you made that decision? So I'm, not, I'm not sure which one you The legacy. The legacy. There were two gals from San Diego, California. One of them was an absolute close friend of mine, Gail Lippmann, who recently passed away. And they came to us with an idea. It took us four years to figure out whether the idea was solid or not. <laughs> That's kind of slow action. But we have created over $300 million in legacy giving with a relatively small investment on our part. And it's an amazing program. It's a little bit detailed, I think, to explain it to the group tonight. But it's the best return on my dollars to get more dollars into the Jewish world. You're talking about dollars. If we could just quickly uh, take a look, transition to the idea. We heard a lot about core values and ethics. I know in this program at the Sison School, ethics is a very important part, uh, particularly with the uh, education that the Sison students get, that they take those ethical values into the workplace. Do you think that it's um, really uh, for you as a, a Jewish uh, entrepreneur and business person, uh, what advice is it, would you give to the students coming out? Is it really possible to combine those ethical values and to be a huge success in the, uh, the world of finance and world of real estate, world of clothing? <laughs> I wrote Warren Buffett a letter about four months ago. And three days later, Warren Buffett called me up. I thought that was pretty impressive. Because Warren Buffett's been a truly somebody I've looked at as being an, an incredible guy, extremely ethical, straightforward. And he asked me to join his group. And I felt very privileged about that. I think it's very, it's, that your, who you are and your credibility is what makes you successful in business. The business I'm in is all on credit. And if you don't have a good credit, I mean, if you're not a person with, with deep character, even sometimes if you buy an investment and you lose $25 million, you're still going to pay the banks. So banks always get paid. But I'd like to ask this group, as most of you are students, how many of you would like to become wealthy? Raise your hands. Okay. 
Son, he, <laughs> too, <laughs> Mosey is too late. You, so, I got to tell you about Mosey. So, Mosey has a brother who I met 30 years ago on the steps of Kadima. His father asked me to give him a summertime job. Mosey's, Mosey's brother could be a professor. That's his nature. He is an incredible businessman. He owns 15% of this business that I hang around with. And he's, a, he's one of the two major players that run this thing. But I asked you the question, how many of you want to become wealthy? I always wanted to become wealthy. It wasn't a question in my mind. Wealth gives you, doesn't bring you necessarily happiness, but it gives you lots of options. Lots of options. You know, you can have toys if you want to. I tend to give my money philanthropically to the Jewish world. But for you who want to become wealthy, and we can have Mosey organize a little get-together sometime when I'm in New York, I'd be glad to sit with you and give you the ABCs of how to make a lot of money. And uh, uh, So why would I want to give you the ABCs or give you the formula that's made me a lot of money? Because we are a speck in our industry. We are so small in our industry, you can't see us. But we do very well. So my motivation is to teach you how to make money so you can come back to this hall and give it away Jewishly. Love it, love it, okay. And <laughs> I think we're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to secure a date on that lecture before you leave. That one's a sellout. Um, I just, if you will, another question for the students because so many of them are gonna be uh, looking for work uh, as uh, they conclude this year uh, in academia. And you've had to uh, interview a lot of people, hire a lot of people uh, over your career, both in uh, industry and in philanthropy. So what, what do you look for? I look for people who are brighter than I am. That's my goal. If you're not brighter than me, you can't work for me. So what do you, how do you hire bright people that are smarter than you and keep them on the payroll? It's not going to sound too well. You suck at them. Isn't that a terrible thing to say to college kids here? So what do you do? What do you mean by suck at them? You make them a partner. You have a business that generates huge wealth every year. You make them a partner. They don't want to go anywhere. I have not run my business for 15 years, and ever since I stopped running the business, my partners have made a lot more money than I ever made. So. It's a formula that works. Thank you. You know, from uh, the Cy Sims Foundation, part of this recognition is also receiving $25,000 uh, as the Cy Sims Humanitarian of the Year. Yeah. And um, I wonder how you think that might best be used, if you could share right. that with me. That's a and everyone else. very good question, because I want to introduce a little bit of entrepreneurship in answering that question. So last night, show me your hand. Last night, I got invited out to dinner by two people. Come on. Come on. So these two people invited me out to dinner. Not bad. The mere fact that I paid for the dinner that they invited me out for. That's not, not important at all, okay? Okay? So, <laughs> These two guys are bad. I want to tell you, he may be the dean of the school, but okay. So <laughs> anyways, I had $25,000 in my pocket when I walked into supper or dinner. Yeah. Okay. So I lost the $25,000. I lost it to a cause that they thought was very appropriate. We back home have 14 colleges and universities that we do 
entrepreneurship programs with. And every year we have this 90 second elevator pitches and we have these banks to give out awards every year and we have a huge majority of it all. So these two fellows said to me, Harold, we have an idea. So, and they have to put together the program, but I gave, actually gave them the money. So best of luck to you guys. Thank you. And, and, and I don't want to take more of the time this evening, because I know this is the students' evening, and you want to get on with partying. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much for letting us all be a part of your evening again. Uh, it's wonderful, and you are wonderful, and we hope that your time leaving uh, Cy Sims will feel make you feel that you are very prepared for the bigger, the bigger world. Thank you, Harold. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, for the dessert part of your evening, there's always one person who inspires everybody around him to be able to inspire you. So I'd ask you to take your seats, please, for a few more minutes, because dessert isn't ready anyway. And I always find that there's something I walk away from when I make this introduction. But I will tell you that we have been blessed. And the turning point in our school was when we took an irascible professor who basically came around to question whether I was sincere in saying I wanted to build up Cy Sims. He came back to me with three questions. I answered right. He wrote me, boy, it seems like you're going to do it. And I decided, decided to get my revenge. And I asked him to become dean. In that period, he's done wonderful work as an educator, as an entrepreneur, as a leader, as a man of vision and generosity. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dean of the Cy Sim School of Business, Moses Papa. Good evening, everybody. Um, I want to thank, first of all, Talia and uh, Leo and the rest of the students. This is a completely student-run event, and we are ex incredibly proud of you tonight. I also wanted to thank uh, Marcy and Lynn Sims and the Cy Sims Foundation for their generous uh, support for the Cy Sims School of Business. And in accepting the Cy Sims Humanitarian Award, Harold Grinspoon honors us. As a businessman and as a philanthropist, he represents Jewish values, and I've heard a lot about Jewish values. Harold is doing it, he's out there. He not only talks the talk, but he walks the walk. In creating PJ Library, Harold has joined the ranks of the Jewish world's most creative and impactful philanthropists. His focus on instilling Jewish values in all our, of our children through his books is a breathtaking project, and he has single-handedly reimagined the incredible power of ideas. Harold is an innovator and an entrepreneur, not just in business, but in his incredible charitable work, as you heard this evening. In preparing my very brief remarks for this evening, I did some research as academics, irascible academics are wont to do, and I actually came across a little known uh, biography of Harold Grinspoon. It's a rather scholarly uh, book, as you can imagine. I found it in the, li the, the Yeshiva University Library. Um, but I really would ask you to indulge me just for a couple of minutes as I quote from the Harold book, as it's called. Let's have a copy of it here. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually a picture of Harold on the cover of the Harold book. And believe it or not, I am going to read a few pages from the Harold book so you'll get to know him a little bit more. This is Harold. 
You can call him Buddy or Grinny or even Hesh. He's a very cool guy who has done a lot in his life. And another very nice picture of Harold. And some of the things that he's done when Harold was little, he took care of his dog Fluffy. Nice dog. And when Harold got a little older, we heard before, he drove an ice cream truck. Harold washed pots and pans and peeled potatoes in the Navy. And then Harold began to build his empire. Harold always loves to get good advice, especially from brilliant, talented, smart, awesome, incredible, wonderful, creative geniuses. You didn't know this, but Harold's a strong man who's faced many challenges. Harold is always very busy, especially raising funds for his favorite projects. Harold likes to buy things for people, even more when he gets a good deal. And he likes to reuse things. Harold loves to read and give away lots of books. Harold drinks a lot of water and enjoys healthy snacks. And he likes to get massages. There you go. Harold likes to travel and go hiking and have a good time. Harold loves to dance. And most of all, he loves Israel and being Jewish. So you can read that tonight to your children. So class of 2015, as academically oriented as I am, and you can see that from my reading material, at the end of the day, the best teaching is by example and through role models. And I can't think of a better way to send you out into the world as you graduate in a couple of weeks in the with the final quote from the Herald book. And most of all, he loves Israel and he loves being Jewish. As we all do tonight, good luck and keep the faith. Thank you.